I'm Julie. And I'm Martin. And we live full time on our 58 foot narrowboat home, Rhapsody in Blue. We're taking you along as we continuously cruise the canals and rivers of the UK with some beautiful scenery, occasional wildlife, landmarks, aqueducts and tunnels. Come with us. You may remember from last week, we're answering your questions on the journey from Foxton through to Bridge 33 on the Leicester line of the Grand Union Canal. So here's where we left off. Oh, he loves me really. Oh. <laughs> right, okay. Jane Me has asked another question. Um, do you have some kind of group or chat with other boaters to communicate issues on the waterways, such as problems with locks or fallen trees, or is there an app or website that you use? Well, basically it's CRT, CRT's website. Um, you go on there and you sign up for notifications. So if anything has been reported, if a tree's come down, a boater will usually report it to CRT and then CRT will put out a notification and you get that on your phone or email. You get an email. Um, you can actually um, determine which canals you're on. So you only get notifications for those canals or rivers or you can just do it for the whole lot. I mean, we've left it for the whole lot so that we know at any one time what's going on around us and, and what have you. You find things out sometimes before you get the notification from CRD and it's just literally word of mouth. You know, a boat will go along and say there's a tree down back there, da 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 da, okay, and then the next boat, the next boat, the next boat, and before you know it, everybody knows or someone will message their friend, there's a boat down, um, a tree down and, and it goes around there. You know, every the boating community is lovely, isn't it? Once you've made friends on the boating community, you're friends for life. It doesn't matter. Oh, God, yeah. You, you may not see people for two or three or, well, months, maybe a, even a year, you know. Yeah. You, you literally, you meet somebody when you're more up, you get chatting and what have you. And then, like Martin said, you might not see them for another six months or a year. But as soon as you do, it's like, hello. And, and you, you sort of pick up from where you left off. So... And if you've got a boat, you're accepted. You're in the boat. It doesn't matter whether you've got an old boat, new boat, big boat, small boat, shiny boat, ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding project boat. Sorry. It really doesn't matter. GRP, narrow boat, it doesn't matter. If you are a boater, you're a boater. That's it. Um, that's what we like. It's like going back in time when everyone was nice to each other. We love it, don't we? Are you pulling faces again? Please I'm don't. Not, no, I'm not. Please don't. No, I wasn't right honest. I've been a really good boy today. Shall we move on then? We do. So, Martin, this one's for you. Can you? This is John Hetherington, and he says, "Can you tell me where you got your mooring hook from?" Right. This one, believe it or not, I put a bit on it just to, because I don't want people just taking it. So, um, yeah. it, it's plain stainless steel. We actually had a fella that came to see us and he came up with all these bits and pieces, didn't he, of, um, that he makes out of stainless steel. Yeah. And I think he'd um, seen us using the other hook that we use. Yeah, I mean, basic one we use, or the one was before this, was a, a mini roller or a, a radiator roller. So you can buy a small one like we had and we extended it with a stick or you can buy one with a very long handle. Long handle. And you take the roll off and all it is is it just leaves like a little hook and it's just enough to yeah. flick through the eye of the chain and pull it through the eye. But yes, yeah, so the most simple one is a a long mini roller and you just take the roll off and it's a long stick. So, Kathy from uh, Kathy Ramsey and Eric Van Ziel has asked, I understand that you can moor you can only moor for two weeks, then you have to move. Is there a required distance before you can moor up again? And Eric asks, if there's a temporary closure on the canal, can you stay moored for longer or do you still have to move? So that's a two part question. After 14 days on a, a 14 day mooring, yes, you do have to move. No, there's not a specific um, distance that you have to move at that specific time but the next time you move you have to keep going in a straight line you can't go 
to a mooring a mile along and then come back to the yeah, you original can't go one. You can't A go to B, B to A. You can't no. do that. You have to go A, B, C, D and keep going. And then you can start coming yeah. back. Some moorings, some moorings are one day only, two days only, and some are seven days, some are 14, and there's usually signs up. But between the end of, end of September and the end of March, they all become 14 days unless there's something that says all year. With the closures, now if it's a planned closure, i.e. it's on the winter closures that CRT put out usually around about the end of August, September time. They put out a list of all the planned maintenance that they're going to be doing for the canals, for the canal system. So if there's a planned um, stoppage, then you need to, as boaters, you need to work your route around that. You can't just say, oh, because there's a, that lock's closed for three months, we're going to sit here. You can't do that. Um, Not unless if, there's a however, general reason. No, well, well, yeah. But if, however, you come to a lock and all of a sudden there's a problem and the gate falls off and they have to close it and it's closed and there's nowhere for you to win the boat, then obviously you speak to CRT and say, look, we've come up to here. We had intended on moving forward. We're stuck. We can't go in it. And CRT will grant you an overstay. And that also comes with like, you might end up with a certain, might be a medical problem. Oh yeah. It could be, you might have a mechanical problem. Yeah. You know, a, a, some a situation that might come up. CRT are not ogres. They will listen to you. If you explain the situation, they are really good to you. I mean, yeah. we've had a couple of times where we've had to say, can we have an overstay? You know, we've got a certain thing. If it's um, a temporary one that's just sprung up in front of you, there's a boat coming, by the way, yeah. um, then yes, you, you possibly can stay longer. Hopefully, that has answered everything. This one's for you, Martin. Charmaine Stewart and Phil Smith have both asked, lots of boaters have cars or vans and move them as they travel. How do you manage without? Are there times when this causes you issues? Um, touch wood at the moment. It's going to turn down a um, bit. There's a boat coming. We've not had a car now for uh, over two, two years. Oh, it's okay. two years in April, isn't it? Yeah, two oh, years. Yeah. So it's two years from Attica. Um, sometimes I have wished at first, but when we first done it, because it, it's obviously a big thing. We've always had cars, haven't we? Oh, it's but the I'll hardest thing to get rid of. Yeah. But to be fair, since we've been um, now, no, I don't, don't think there's any reason, is there? We can get our shopping delivered to a bridge. Like I say now, if I need something, but we're probably not gonna be near shops now for the next week or so, are we? If I no. need something, That's I will just ride up. That's why we stopped up at Tesco's, didn't we? Yeah, we stopped today. up at Food Wise, and then... Let um... this boat go past. Hey, are uh, you all right? Going up the North Hill, Um, We're gonna stop at Bridge 50, I think. And then work our way slowly. See you later. Take See care. Ya. What was he saying? Oh uh, no, with the cars. So yeah. technically, I've, we've well, we've adapted, haven't we? I mean, yeah. if I've well, when we first went out, I had to go back. It was a, an anniversary of my dad, so I went to go and see the Book of Remembrance. But you can get to a station and that, and I stayed over with my brother. I think you wanted to go to your mum's. Is it eightieth? Yeah, mum's eightieth birthday. So we know they're coming up, so we can plan well in advance where we need to be train station so really i mean again the only time we miss a car is when we really would like to go and see family especially our boys sometimes you talk to them and you think oh if only i was there you know i'd love to give them a hug it's all family isn't it i mean yeah. there's nothing where if you had your car you know if something happened you're instantly there yeah. all it means that it might take me slightly longer to get there which yeah. is something that yeah when we went to our um, niece's wedding we hired a car so we just pulled into a marina, hired a car, and we were there. Yeah. So, so, it, yeah, so it can be done. So this one's one for me. Peter Brown, number 14. I watch many narrowboat channels, and in the two years I have watched, I have only seen a cop on the towpath once. What is the security like on the canals? Do they patrol or have other ways of keeping watch? Well, they do patrol. We do see um, policemen. 
we don't film them but uh, yeah Some we have got a few on uh, mountain bikes now to be fair yes these... they do but um we do have our security camera which obviously is a deterrent which you've seen um, and most boaters and most boaters will also look out for each other so it's security pretty... is, is fine isn't it it's okay and yes they do patrol um, you've got CRT as well they're walking around so they'll, they'll oh, know yeah, you're course. about you CRT. always get CRT are walking around but most time I don't think we've really had anything I think in two years we've had a minor incident didn't we yeah but we didn't have any I wouldn't say there's anything there that's worried us no really do you know what I mean nothing I, that's I did well answering that question didn't I yeah did? sorry <laughs> I should put a long wig on <laughs> yours is in... <laughs> I'd like to see that <laughs> Right, this one's for you, Martin. Thank Where have you. you gone? Oh, he's gone down there sitting on the... Oh, sorry. Uh, Who's this for? Nicholas Simpson, for you. If it was to freeze tonight and you had full food, water and fuel and an empty toilet tank, how long could you survive? I.e., could you last 21 days? Yes. Yes. Just. Well, we've known, we've, if, depending, obviously, of what you eat and how much you drink <laughs> um, we've gone four weeks haven't we before we've had to enter the toilet and if, you, yeah. if you're not plundering your your stocks like right? you know eating everything as soon as you see it there's nothing to say and water with um, 680 litres yeah, yeah. so let's just backtrack on what you just said what plundering when I, <laughs> yeah when I buy extra because it's on offer and it's buy two for one or something and <laughs> the next thing they're empty and I'm like where's the biscuits gone I bought two packs this time yeah, well, well didn't buy them to look at them did I I know hey, but... you know what I mean if, if they're there they're for eating aren't they um, <laughs> <laughs> but going back to it um, yeah we can yeah 21 days easy uh, like I say yeah. we've done four weeks on the toilet haven't we the water not we four would... weeks on the toilet I mean four weeks <laughs> four we're, weeks we would have to be really careful with the water yeah, we just, if you love each other, you know, you can put up with certain <laughs> things. <can't you? laughs> not, not washing. <laughs> no. No, you do wash. No, yeah. no, we do wash. But, no, I mean, we, we would have to be very careful with the water. That would be, you know, that would be the thing that would run out first, I think, would be the water. So, Martin, another one for you. Chris Passmore, number 16. How often do you clean your narrowboat outside and what polish do you use? <laughs> oh, Motilla. Oh dear. Right. Oh, Motilla. Oh, leave me going out in the middle there, you reckon. Oh, Donnie's got to go and get it, I think. <laughs> I'm so sorry I'm not filming it. I know, but you have seen this journey, I think, three times, so... But even so, it's still beautiful. Come on, hurry up! <laughs> Basically, I give the boat a really good wash twice a year and a polish. So I've got two lots. I've got a colour restorer. Um, it's G3 Pro. Um, so where can you get that, Martin? This is Alfred's and other outlets. You know, you can even get it on Amazon as well. So, um, so yeah, I'll give it a proper wash so you know, in the next couple of weeks it, this boat will get a real good soapy wash a proper yes. wash and then it will get a proper full polish and then most of the time then until winter time i just rinse it and then put a leather so You've i've got, got like a water spray bottle yeah and i you? spray it on i just make sure there's no grit on the boat obviously rinse it off first because you don't want it scratching but basically yeah. what i do color color restorer that brings up the lushness again and then I put a resin type super wax that one on the top and then she stays pretty good throughout the summer during the year I'm, I'll give it a rinse just cold water if we're at a water point rinse it off and then I will um, just lever it off and normally pretty much it comes up shiny nothing really special just give it a real proper like I say twice a year one, like I say, in the next couple of weeks, now the, now the spring's come in, and then once I've done the summer, I'll give her another good wash and a wax to see her through the winter. I mean... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Martin, 
my turn. <laughs> and Julie, she only washes twice a year as well. <laughs> well it's once more than you. <laughs> So hopefully I'll answer that one, yes. So right. do I need to go back to the questions? Do you want yes. to come back to your uh, my perch? Your podium. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that folks. Okay. Greg and Dale from Australia. Good night. <laughs> do the canals hold a population of fish? And if so, have you considered fishing for them as a food source? You can start this one, because you do the fishing. Yes, they do hold a population of fish. I do believe there's bream, roach, there is carp. There is carp. Yep. Uh, there's also um, a invasive species in the canals called Xander. There's also pike. Ah, oh, look at these doggies. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you are right? Yeah, it's beautiful day. It's it lovely, is, isn't it? it? No coat. <laughs> um, you like your fishing, don't you? I do like my You're fishing. You're going to do more. I will probably do this year. As for a food source, no. Um, canals, they're not the cleanest, I would say. They're not the cleanest, you know. They're, they've not got a real natural flow. But you're not supposed to take fish from the canals anyway. No, no but there's, um, you get, like I was saying, the Xander. They're an invasive species, so technically what they say to you, you can take Xander out. Apparently Xander is very, very nice eating. I mean, yeah. I've never had the thing. So basically I would fish purely for pleasure, which means I would catch and release. I don't hold them in nets. And that would be as far as I would go. I yeah. would never Personally, say, I wouldn't eat anything that's come out of the canal. I don't care how you've cooked it. No. <laughs> I'm not eating it. No. But anyway, right, next question is from Mark Richards and Charmaine Stewart. How do you get your mail? Do you use ship to shore? And if so, how does it work? Yes, we do. We use ship to shore. So we get a registered address. You pay a subscription once a year. Um, it's a very personal service. Um, you can use it for your bank, your bank cards, credit cards, um, anything passports. and everything, passports, a lot, anything. You can then choose to have your post opened for you and then they will email you to let you know what's what's arrived once a week. Or you can ask them to just store your, keep hold of your post, let you know that you've got some post and then it's up to you how you get it. Or you can ask for items to be scanned and sent to you via email electronically. But when, she, when you know, we do get stuff sent there and we need it, like we had new bank cards, didn't we? Yes. Uh, recently, because I hadn't, my, my card was cloned, rat bags. Um, so I had to have a new card, new PIN number. She let me know when it had arrived and we were, we happened to be at Crick and there was a post office. So you can go to your nearest, the nearest post office to where you are and if they do a service called post restante which most of them do you can then ask for that item to be sent post restante in your name to that post office and it's no extra charge it's just normal postage payment and then you just go and collect it and then we just go and collect it but um, no it works really really well really well we definitely recommend ship to shore and if you do i'll put a link in the description below and if you do just tell them that julia martin <laughs> sent you because I think we get we get something like 20 pound towards our post as they recommended yeah yes. um, next one is question 19 Betty Eakin um, this one's for Martin how long does it take from when you pull into moor to when you finish mooring up to get all set up two minutes yeah. not really no. um, <laughs> pretty much I mean we, we work as a team when we're mooring up so yeah. Um, either I'll go in bow first and then Julia jump off the front and then she'll just come along and get the middle line which From is you. always kept at the back or sometimes I'll reverse in depending on the wind situation or where we're going yeah. if it's a tight spot I like to if it's between two boats I normally like to go reversing, reversing. so I can um, but from mooring up well 
five, ten minutes and we're pretty much in, sorted, chimneys on. We've yeah. pretty much got our own way of doing things, haven't we? Uh, Julie will probably once go in and Once we've actually moored up, yeah. once we've done the, the rope side of the end, then I'll go in and probably get the kettle on or sort the washing and, and you'll finish. Just me set ways, it might be the... set the camera up, I'll put the chimney on, if you know, depending at the moment like we, I just put the extra extension on the on the chimney so pretty much what 10 10 15 minutes yeah. and we're pretty much sitting down inside yeah. or outside depending on the weather outside. yeah about Nearly. 10 to 15 minutes so Andrea Hickling next question number 20 me and hubby are about to start our narrowboat life I believe well actually yes I think they're actually on board now and they still need to sort out their internet and TV. Please could you explain what aerial would be best for cruising and what else we will need? Well, because obviously I knew that they were going to be moving onto their boat within the, the following week. I answered them initially, but obviously we'll answer it on here as well. Because the boat being a steel boat and a steel tube, it acts very much like a Faraday cage so to get a signal into the boat you would either have to hold your phone at the window or what we've got is a omnidirectional aerial that goes sits on top of the boat on a magnetic mount the wire goes down and into the boat and into a router um, and we have a is it Huawei? yeah no it's not, not it's TP-Link I think it is um, no, that's for Huawei, isn't it? Huawei. No, that's point, pointing. Right, yeah. I'll shut up. So yeah, so we've got the <laughs> the aerial on the roof that goes down into a router, and then everything's run on Wi-Fi. So I mean, we've got the telly on Wi-Fi that's connected to the router, so we can watch things like Netflix, the Prime, Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> and all our phones so we get pretty much good signal wherever we go um, we are actually on EE and apart from I think there's only really been two black black holes that we haven't been able to one was Blakemere um, on the Clangothlan but literally Clangothlan but literally half a mile either side and it was fine it was just that it was just so dense with trees and and you're sort of in a valley aren't you um, and Crick for some reason Crick is a black hole for internet full stop <laughs> so but no apart from that we we have good internet we managed to upload videos so yeah but yeah that's what you need and a smart TV obviously Doc Robertson would you ever consider changing from a pump out loo to an incinerator no no <laughs> um, I'm only going through information I've gained through other boaters. Obviously, a, an incinerator toilet, you'd be burning a lot more gas. Yes. It's not so much the solids, but it has to vaporise the the wet side, the number the one. The liquids. Yeah. There's a boat coming through the bridge, Martin. So. Right, evasive action. Normally I'm at the front. So it said. Yeah, so you're going over there. Yeah, I might go yeah. around this tree. So no, with them um, with toilets, we're quite happy with the pump out. We don't have to worry about it for three to four weeks. And as Martin said, you do burn a lot more gas. So no, the answer is no. Sorry, Doc. <laughs> We're nearly, nearly at our mooring, so no, yes. We're going to keep going, Julie. It's only not even midday. Oh, well, we're not stopping at Bridge 50. I thought you wanted to do touching up on the side of the boat. He oh. does like to touch the boat up. Never called just... you a boat in my life. <laughs> Stop it. No, because you've got the tow path on the left. Oh, it's up to you. It's we'll up to see. you. But anyway, number 22. And uh, Wagner you... and Adrian Smith have asked, I would love, Anne says, I would love to know about Martin's Spitfire mounted in front of where he stands to steer. Is there a story behind that? And Adrian says, looking at the plane in the blue and white circle, wondered if Martin was a military man. 
unfortunately no I wasn't. I nearly joined the RAF when I was a kid but unfortunately when you meet a lovely lady. Oh I was nothing to do with it, that was year before me, years before me. No, it wasn't. It but was thank good. you for the compliment. <laughs> um, no, the boat, basically the boat has got history with two lots of owners, both in the RAF. The original owners were from America. Well, that wasn't blue. the RAF, that was the, well, the US. American Air Force. American Air Force. But, Sorry. Right, same thing. Sorry. Rhapsody in Blue, um, which they named it, was the theme tune to the US Recruitment. AF. Recruitment. The recruitment. And obviously when they sold it, the, the last fella that, or we bought the boat, he was a professional pilot in the RAF. So yes. when he had it repainted, he had this, the target with this on the hatch. I put the Spitfire there as a bit of a sort we, of a dedication to. I, I we saw it, didn't we? Yeah, and I thought it was just a nice little touch to finish off the boat. We know the boat's got history with the RAF. Yeah, we did, didn't we? We did. Sorry, I have to say, we, Zivi, Vonzi, Lebobotum, Wawa, we Um Wally. No, um. <laughs> But yeah, so, so yeah, we decided it was a nice little touch for the boat just to finish it off. Just a little, a little dedication. Nod. Yeah, not to that. To them because they looked after the boat yeah. so well. It's beautiful. We love our boat. Yeah. So basically, no, I have no. Um, and then. Military background. I'm no. Afraid. And then Rickefeller, number twenty-three, has asked us. Who's Rickefeller? Oh, you know who Rickefeller is. <laughs> um, now that you've had your reflex diesel heater for a year, I hear that a bag of coal isn't as cheap as it used to be. Would you say the diesel heater is more economical or more expensive than using coal? I'm sure it's always toasty warm, but is it quite thirsty? Does it drink a lot of diesel? The answer to that is... It's killing us. No, it's not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's where we're going to walk. Um Is it? We are at Bridge 50 now. This is the mooring. Sorry, this is what I was trying to say. We're already here. Oh. We've only got a few questions. We can carry on standing at the back of the boat. Yeah, where are we going to moor? We will then? answer you in a minute, Rickefeller. Right. Okay. Funny. Rickefeller, just... sorry. Rickefeller, We're not... Rickefeller. No, no, no. I'm sure he's heard that before. No, right. Don't um, do that. We won't say that. We won't do that. I'm a Rickefeller. You're a Rickefeller. <laughs> Go on. Love you. Right. Kiss so you. we're not mooring here now. We've decided to carry on. Martin has. Um, <laughs> the reflex diesel stove. Right. Um, the re Mart! Can't do this. I'm trying to get. Go on. Action. So, we're not mooring here now, so we're going to answer your question, Rickefeller. Okay, the reflex diesel stove. Um, I don't really know what the price of coal is at the moment. I think we might be on a par, slightly cheaper. Um, we're using approximately five litres in 24 hours aren't we yes. and what did we pay for our it was one pound five one pound five a litre so it's costing us five pound 25 at the moment um a day so i don't know if who's got coal at the moment what, what did people say that the coal was at the minute about seven is it 17 pound a bag? 17 to 18 pound a bag plus your kindling so it perhaps is a little bit cheaper at the moment, but obviously the price of the stove in the first place, it's never going to pay for itself, but we did it purely through choice. You know, we preferred to have um, diesel. We don't get the, the mess and the muck anymore. We don't have to lug coal around. We just have to make sure that we've got enough diesel in the tank. But, and the convenience um, is it's not that it's very controllable. Oh yes, and recently it's been warm during the day and then cold of an evening. So we've been turning it off during the day, it's off at the moment. Um, and then when the sun goes down, the temperature drops and we put the heater on. Sometimes we turn it off before we go to bed as well, which you couldn't do with the coal when we had the log burner, could we? 
Well, no, not really. You just have to let it burn out, didn't you? So yeah. it's hot. It's always hot. Yeah. So, so yeah. In that respect, I think it probably is a little bit more economical because we can regulate it. We can also turn it up if we if it's really cold. We can turn it up to to get a bit more heat, or we can turn it off if we get too hot. So. Yeah. Well, put it this way, last year, I mean, summer weren't the best, was it? No. Um, where, again, once you're trying to get the fire going, it takes a while, doesn't it? It's Yeah. I mean, I call her the old lady. I used to call the fire the old lady. It took a lot to get her going. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. No, um... Were you referring to me? She... <laughs> um... Oh, look, okay, spray legs. Oh, yeah, change the subject. Sorry. Change the subject. Next mm. question. No, uh, but, 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 like, I'm just saying, where a coal fire, you've got to get the fire going. and Yeah, it takes a while to get it going. It takes a while to get the heat going. Where with a diesel, it's a little bit of meth, drop match in, take your eyebrows off. It and does not. It's fine. Ever so easy. And it doesn't take your eyebrows off. The only time that has happened, do you really have to turn that up? <laughs> Is he doing it to warm me up? No, the only time you can get blowback, if you like, is if, <laughs> stop, stop it, is if you light it the first time and it blows the match out, which has happened a couple of times, it's enough to have heated the vapour inside. You do not put another flame near that because it does down. go bang um i believe um our friends paul and anthony anthony found that out and he ended up burning all up his arm so if you do light it and the match goes out never try and light it again have the lid open let it cool down for about 20 minutes or so until it's freezing cold and then try again yes. or you can use a fire lighter if you wish next question hope that helps Ricabella. next question Oop is from Stephen Bonza and Kath Tomlinson. Number 24, we're almost done, Martin. Why do you have the standard chimney cap on when cruising and the H1 on when moored up? Presumably, the height is one reason, but does the H cap allow the stove to burn better by allowing the air, uh, more air draft? Yes, you're right. It is all to do with the air draft. Um, we, we have a standard chimney, but because it's been um, very, very windy conditions, that's why we've had the H cowl on, um, because that helps to um, regulate the wind. It, the wind doesn't come down the chimney so much. So, um, yeah, most of the time we'll have the normal one, won't we? Yes. And when we're cruising, we'll have the li little dinky one because of bridges. But when we moor up, we'll have either the regular one or we'll have the H cowl. If we're out in the open and it's going to be very windy, then we'll put the H on. Uh, yeah, hopefully that helps. Yes, basically <laughs> H was a, it's an offshore. Yes. And then Julie and Howard Twig have asked, question 24, how is the new Rio Link camera going? I actually like the Rio Link. We only put it on if we're leaving the boat for any sort of time, i.e. when we went to boat time or boat life on it. Yeah, we'd left and it for a few time, hours. You know, we just put it on. And like I say, from the last vlog, <laughs> it's been quite good, hasn't it, really? We've yeah. see what's going on when you're asleep. Well, it's we wasn't asleep. What? I think we were sitting there and I think we made a noise, didn't we? As you probably saw that badger. I mean, as soon as we made a noise, he sort of stopped and looked and... But yeah, uh, to be fair, yeah, I like it. It's um, it's just the one camera on the arm. It's got a solar panel. It's done everything we wanted, isn't it? Yeah, really? you can see and both ends of the boat at the same time. Yeah, yeah, no messing about. One camera, just adjust it, done, finished, bang, wham, yeah. wallop. Yeah, and, and there's no no other cost either, is there? Because it's all stored within the camera. Yeah, and the solar panel, so there's no charge. I think it's still 100%, it's, isn't it? It's 100% every day, even even in all this bad weather we've had, there's been enough solar to keep it topped up. So it's brilliant. So personally for us, and I think it was pr proving it to Rio Link as well, wasn't it, this camera? Yeah. Would it work on a narrowboat? Personally uh, yes, for us, it, does. It, it works for us. Um, and then the last question is Christmas. Is there 
anywhere on the canal system that you haven't been to yet and still want to visit. There are loads of places we haven't been to. There are loads of places we want to go to and there are loads of places we want to go back to. Um, yes. We're in no rush. We want to enjoy and savour every minute of it. We don't want to be flying around the canal system trying to be everywhere. I mean, we just want to take it in. We've got the rest of our life. We like to it. See we like places, our pace so. of life. We don't yeah. rush. We enjoy it. We well, we like it incident free and we just enjoy it, the pace of life. So come on then Martin, where do you want to go? Come on. Where's the place that I you mean, would like to go? I still want to do that. We we're planning the Peak District. We want to do the Peak District. We want to do the Leeds and Liverpool. We've got the Anderton boat lift. I'd, I'd love to do the Langollen again, but I think the Langollen, Langollen, wherever you want to call it, Langollen, wherever it is, can't do it every year. It's something that then you look forward to going back to, isn't it? Yeah, we'd love to do the Langollen again. Yeah, definitely. But we said we'd probably leave it two or three years and then go back. There's loads of. We'd love London. to do the Thames. Yes, yeah. we'd love to do the Thames. Tower Bridge and that, yeah. where they go out, I think it's with the, the tide attempts. they go out with another boating club, don't they, you yes. all go together. Yeah, we'll so do that. There is so many things that we got to look forward to, there's no rush to do it, which means it keeps it exciting, doesn't it? Mm. It's like, you don't want to be I'd like bored to do uh, the Ribble Link as well, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Martin's a little bit nervous of that one, but yeah, we're, I mean, I don't know. I mean, we're, we're hoping to do Scare Castle um, after Crick. Oh, your liver is here. After Crick. Um, it's my pants. <laughs> it's not, it's his leather. <laughs> if that was your pants, you've got a problem. It's my leather pants. <laughs> but um, no, we, we would like to do. Well, there's loads of places we'd love to go, Chris. So we really would. So, yeah. no, we haven't done everything. Please excuse us if we've forgotten your question or missed it somehow. Please put it back in the comments and we'll answer it on the next video, we promise. So, hope you've enjoyed this. Um, it's getting chilly. Apart from, it is getting chilly. The sun's gone behind those clouds up there. But, um, yeah, so we're going to wrap this up here. Thank you very much for watching. Yep. Um, if you've enjoyed it, give us a like. Subscribe, it's free. Click the notification bell. And YouTube will let you know when we upload the next one. And leave us a comment. Because I answer every single one. And she does. I do. You Sometimes do. one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. But I love it. I absolutely love it. So, yeah, thank you all so much. We love all our viewers. Thank you. Oh, and thank you so much to everyone who's bought us coffees this week. Yes. I'll put the names on the screen. Thank you so much. Honestly, you don't know how much that helps. It is, oh, we're so grateful. It keeps, you go, yeah, it keeps the channel, oh, doesn't it? God, Everything yeah. we do plough back into the channel, so. Yeah, no, it does really help, really helps. So yeah, thank you very much. As long as everyone's thank happy, you. we are happy. Yeah. That's a wrap.